Welcome back everybody, I'm Naha, this is 30 Days of Tarot, and we're here in our final week of the series. We will, of course, be opening up a deck today, but before we do that, I've got a huge announcement. I know that I've been promising you guys that this was coming, and today it's the full moon. It couldn't be more appropriate to let you guys know about this thing that is actually not exactly tarot related, but it is something that is a huge part of my practice, and that is working with the mineral kingdom and crystal healing. And my announcement is I have a brand new book coming out. It's called Everyday Crystal Rituals, Healing Practices for Home, Career, Wealth, and Love. And I am just so excited to actually have this coming to fruition. I poured my heart and soul into this book and I wrote 60 different rituals. So there's all kinds of things from how to heal your heart, to attract love, to create a better work environment, to create a better home environment and a sacred space. There's easy rituals that are better for beginners, there's more advanced rituals, and in addition to that, I've also written 100 different crystal profiles. So we actually photographed 100 crystals from my collection and I've given in-depth interpretation of how I feel that these crystals can be best used, what their purposes are, how I use them, and I'm just so excited to be able to share this with you guys. This is the first place that I'm announcing it. So to all of you who have been following along this series, I know that you might not think of me as your crystal guru, but we'll see how that might actually be coming to pass. Now the book is available for pre-order at this time. It's on Amazon. Of course, the link will be down below. Um, it won't be officially available to be mailed to you till December 4th, but in the meantime, you can still help me out by generating some buzz, getting a pre-order, and, and that book will be here in time for the holidays. It'll be, make a great gift for anybody that you know that loves crystals, and as I said, I'm just so excited. And I don't don't have a copy of it yet but I do have the cover that I can show you guys so <laughs> that's just a picture of the cover everyday crystal rituals so again um, it's big news this is my first book and I've just been so hush hush about it I didn't want to say anything until it was actually finally done and ready to purchase so there you go and now we're gonna get back to our regular scheduled programming of 30 days of tarot <laughs> Now, today's deck is actually not going to be a tarot deck. It is what I like to call tarot adjacent, and it is an oracle deck. But one of the reasons why I felt that this deck was going to be really important to be a part of this series is because I really am trying to make sure that I hit all of the major tarot publishers that I really love. And if by the time the series is over, there is one that I have omitted or overlooked, it might just be one that I don't know about, and I really encourage you guys to share that with me. But the publisher that this deck comes from is actually the French tarot card and playing card company Grimou. Now, I pulled out a few other decks of mine that I have that you might be familiar with. Of course, this is their Tarot of Marseille, and that is the company. And this playing card factory was actually founded in 1848 in Paris by Baptiste Paul Grimou. And they also have published this well-known tarot, the Grand Etea, of course, Etea being one of the very first professional tarot card readers. So that was his deck. And then I also have, this is really cool. It's a rare deck. You may have seen this before though. And this is actually called the Geomantic deck. So it's a deck of geomancy, uh, just another form of divination. But let's go ahead and open up what I've got for you guys today. And I don't think that a lot of my people in the US are gonna have heard about this. It's if you're from France, or maybe if you're from Europe, you might have seen this before. And this package came from Paris to Etazuni. <laughs> and this is something that I actually was able to find on eBay. This deck came out in 1986, so it's a little bit rare, but you can still find it. It's a little expensive, but it's not crazy. So I'm going to go ahead and get this open for you guys. And this deck is called the Oracle des Soirs. Now, some of the information that I got about it, I had to translate from the French, so it might have a little bit of a, a rough translation. 
but what I could find is that this deck was created by the internationally acclaimed Maj de Soir and the great draftsman Peter Serre. It draws on contemporary myths and symbols, on a vast and mysterious desert, Scenes that joined to each other re will reveal to you your own interior landscape. And so here we see it has almost this kind of sci-fi look to it. Made in France, of course, this is the 1986 edition, and Baptiste Paul Grimau. Now, Grimau eventually was bought by another company, but, but retained its name. And now a lot of European card publishing companies have come under one kind of conglomerate, and that is the Cardamundi Group. And Cardamundi has published everything from Magic the Gathering and Pokemon cards to Uno to tarot cards and tons of playing cards. And it, they also acquired A.G. Mueller, that Swiss company. So there's a good chance. I mean, they're one of the biggest playing card and also board game manufacturers in the world. And one of their logos is the brand you don't know you love. <laughs> Originally established in Belgium and now just being so huge. And the work that they publish is in over 180 countries. So chances are in your game cabinet, you have something from Cardamunde. Maybe you don't even realize it. But today we're looking at this deck, Oracle de Soir. And I just, I've seen this for a long time. I thought it was finally going to be time to get myself one. And fortunately, the book does come in multiple languages. It's in French and German and English. And one thing that's unique about this deck is the way that you lay it out. So I'll just show you this before we even look at the cards. You can see that the cards are laid out end to end, or here they are kind of stacked in a pyramid form. And I'm just going to go ahead and start showing these to you guys as I tell you a little bit more about this. And you can see there's a keyword down at the bottom here. This one says Acquisition, Purchase, Project, or maybe it's Project. Hmm. But it's interesting that we have these little playing card pips going there, and that seems to be a motif. This is the journey, and it looks like we have a little figure here from regular playing cards, right? And here we have money. Come back. Hmm, sexy. She's a scuba diver. So do you see what's happening here? All of these cards have a similar landscape. So when you lay them out together, it makes one big picture. Isn't that so cool? Who do we have here? Documents. Hmm. I just think these are so different. Have you ever seen anything like it? And the backs look like this. So the backs just continue with the same landscape. And then you can also include that if you need to space out a couple things. Look at this one. Providence. I just love how they worked the playing card suits in there. And now remember, this was made in the 80s. And in the little book here it says, On the eve of the year 2000, this resolutely modern new cardamancy calls upon contemporary myths and symbols. It was jointly created by the well-known Magus Dessoir, Parisian clairvoyant of international renown, and by the famous designer Pat Patrice Serre. Now, interestingly, I could not find that much out, Amour, I'm in love, about these two. And one place that I was actually able to find just a little blurb about them because I thought, oh, if they're so world renowned and they're so internationally acclaimed, why can I not find anything? Whenever you look them up, all you find is the deck again and again. I guess this was their piece de resistance. But I was looking actually on French Amazon and I found a review that somebody had written. Look at this one, youth. Looks like they're almost on like some kind of new age skateboard there. And you really get the sense that this is like these images from the future. What in the 80s maybe they thought that the future was going to look like. And some of it is 
kind of sci-fi and some of it's also a little bit apocalyptic obviously some of it is a little racy here we have you know this I get like a little bit of a Mad Max kind of vibe to it news it's that phone booth in the middle of nowhere wisdom birth and so this review said Desoir was an exceptional medium and it is unfortunate that the memory of such exceptional individuals is not preserved. He had a friend, Patrice Serre, a cultist, sinologist, which I had to look up what that is. Sinology is actually the study of Chinese literature, culture, and history. But he was especially a draftsman, and he designed the oracle with great relevance and keys. What is this one? Prison. And there was another review on this deck, and it just said, this is not a toy. I thought that was pretty good. These cards are pretty stinky. They smell like they've been in somebody's storage unit. They have that, like, really musty kind of, like, thrift store. Maybe, like, they're not, like, mildewy, but they do have that, like, been in deep storage for a long time. Delay. Yeah, the boat just there in the desert madness folly this deck seeks to be an instrument at the service of the latent parapsychological faculties within each of us phantasm oh, the dominatrix here's the obstacle the Dessoir Oracle is intended to be a genuine backup to clairvoyance. That's an interesting idea. What if you think of clairvoyance as being able to look out over this open landscape and see kind of what images appear, what scenes appear in the mind's eye? The state of meditation generated through strict observance of the universal symbols. This is poverty. There's some difficult images in here, you know, a child that's obviously facing starvation. And sometimes I've said this about oracles that they are not necessarily really all encompassing of some of the more difficult messages in life. And it's one of the reasons why I tend to lean more towards the tarot, which is definitely all encompassing. I mean, look at that deck we looked at yesterday. I was so surprised by you guys because I did not know what to expect. I thought, God, people might be really turned off by that Barbara Walker deck. And you all loved it. This was the one that I got the most comments saying that you guys already owned that deck. There were so many of you that said, oh, you've You've already had that deck for a while. That's just a blank. And so I should have known that you guys are awesome in that way and you would be totally here for it. But you've got to be real about the state of the world and everything is not all wonderful messages. Here we see misdirection. Thanks to this oracle, clairvoyance is within reach of us all. This is interesting. I wouldn't expect this message, but it says sorrow. But you can imagine like a very slow and mournful type of music coming out here. And the spades. I, you know, now that I didn't don't know, I'd even think about this, but perhaps we could actually connect the playing card suit to the tarot card suit. You know, spades is the suit that corresponds to swords. So put that together with this idea. Hmm. They have no numbers fatality and it's spades again so let's go back and find some of the other cards that had some playing card suits now this was clubs and it had here documents project now that would, would correspond right to the suit of wands so i can see this one success it does seem like they that may be what they intended and then I would imagine that some of those, oh, I didn't look at this one with you guys, but that's cool, Fortune, and it's a little four-leafed club, four-leaf clover there. I would imagine that the ones that have to do with love have the hearts on them, or, or you know, f for instance, this one, Pleasure, or this one, Hope. I have, I don't think I've seen any diamonds yet, though. Do you guys recall seeing diamonds? Oh, here's one. And that was this card, which said jail, hmm. which would correspond to pentacles. Well, maybe there is something in there. 
And now I'm getting the title card, but it's all in French. This one says pride. And also in the book, it says the background picture on each side of the cards is exactly the same as the desert as huge and mysterious as life itself. Scenes appear within this desert as a film illustrating all of the themes and human archetypes. This one is called Damage. This reminds me of the tower. And here's a little Mad Max for you. Some punk rockers there. The game comprises four series of 13 cards each, bearing the suits, spades, hearts, clubs, diamonds, blended subtly into the pictures of the cards. In each of the series, the cards go from the ace to the king. Wow, interesting. So I did notice, now I'm seeing, they do have uh, the numbers on them. I thought that that was maybe just part of the image, but here we see the six of spades, and here we see the nine of spades. Illness, what is that? Zika virus? This one, here's the three of spades. Business, work, loneliness. So I don't know that they line up exactly with the tarot, but really interesting struggle. And then I love this. What is just a classic 80s picture? It reminds me of the Queen cover. Um, that one says partner. And that would be the seven of clubs. See, it's very kind of hidden in there, but you can see the seven and the clubs. Oh, this is pretty great. So it says in here, the 10 commandments of the fortune teller suggested by the Magus de Soir for a new cartomancy. Number one, one can draw the cards with either hand. Okay, there goes my theory, you know, my receptive hand. Two, no one hour or day is preferable to another. Three, the cards need not necessarily be shuffled. Well, these commandments are basically like, do whatever you want, love that. Four, everybody can touch your cards. Five, the cards must be read straight. I guess that means there's no reversals. Six, they can be picked either by the inquirer or the fortune teller. Seven, it is the global theme which should be referred to, bearing in mind its relationship to the neighboring card. Eight, a reasoned analysis of the cards is merely a preliminary approach to the state of inner vision which must be attained. Nine, the cards do not determine your destiny but can become one of the signs. Hmm, I like that. 10, be the lover of your cards. They will surrender their perfume and their heart. Well, they're surrendering their perfume. I will tell you that. <laughs> and then there is an explanation of each card. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna draw three and then I'll turn the camera down so you guys can actually see what I see down here. So let's go ahead and I guess we don't have to direct what our question is we're just asking for an image and then we'll use that to activate our clairvoyance shall we let's see if i can riffle shuffle these cards you know i've heard that if you leave things out in the sun after they've been in storage that it'll take that smell away so fortunately living in los angeles as i do even though it's october it's still going to be hot and sunny today so i'm going to put these out on my patio all right, pick with either hand. Well, you know, old practices die hard. So I'm just going to go ahead and I've already cut and I'm going to lay out three cards. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and turn this camera down so you guys can see. All right. So here we have the three cards. Promotion, raise, ruin, and retour, come back. Hmm. I find that it's interesting that what we see here is actually upward movement. What we see here is far, far in the background. And this idea of ruin actually is expressed in ruins here. And then we have this coming back, like a return. And one place where we have the water actually in the desert. So to me, the message here is 
that we have this idea of ruin right in the center of our awareness. But here we have a message of a return to maybe what could have been some of the ancient wisdom that resided here before this temple had fallen into ruin. And in order to find what this ancient wisdom may have been at one time, and to look back at that, we need to raise ourselves to a higher perspective, to be able to see further in the distance and get out of the sense of just stumbling over these blocks right here. Does that work for you guys? Hmm. Well, maybe you can come to your own conclusions there. I'll put you guys back up. Well, this is a pretty cool and unique deck. And as I said, once I've aired it out a little bit, I think that I'm gonna have a lot of fun playing with this. And I think that it would be cool to do much larger than just a three card spread, but actually to lay out quite a series or as it showed in there to do the whole pyramid. So I thank you guys so much for being here. Um, take a look at these old Gramu decks because they are still publishing, even though they are under Cardamundi, they still retain the name and they have some really cool things out. As I said, uh, it's still possible to find the Oracle Dessar. You might have to pay maybe between 30 to $50 for it, but it's definitely available. And don't forget to go pre-order my book, especially if you have any kind of affinity for crystals at all. I know it's an area that I have not talked about on this channel before, but that's all gonna be changing soon. And I will be incorporating a little bit more teachings and a little bit more sharing and knowledge about crystals if you guys are here for that. And you can always let me know down in the comments below, but don't worry. the stuff's not going anywhere. So have a great and blessed full moon and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.